three, two, one. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, this is a special called meeting to discuss uh, resolution 2021-794, uh, the uh, transfer of personnel operational activities related to solid waste disposal from public works to Metro Water Services to uh, potentially uh, transition uh, uh, the Department of Public Works to a Department of the Transportation. Uh, this is a, a joint meeting of the Public Works Committee, the Traffic, Parking, and Transportation Committee, and the Budget and Finance Committee. It's March 11th, uh, and we have until 5 o'clock. We're bumping up against another meeting at 5, so uh, just to make sure everybody stays concise uh, in their comments uh, and the like uh, after our presentation. Um, is uh, Finance Chairman Toombs on the call? Yes. Uh, you're recognized for a few comments if you'd like to start us out, uh, Chairman. Uh, no, no comments, Chair. You're, you're doing a fabulous job so far, so you can continue on. <laughs> Glad you said so far. <laughs> uh, Chairman O'Connell, uh, I also have you uh, listed here. Uh, are you uh, available and uh, wish to uh, start us out? Uh, going once. I don't see him at the moment. Uh, well, then uh, I'll get started and be very brief. Uh, I want to thank uh, all the administration, uh, uh, Mr. Massimo, uh, Ms. Whitelaw, for uh, uh, taking the time to answer council questions. I thank all the council people that took time to uh, share any questions they had uh, with our uh, director, uh, uh, Director Cooper, uh, and uh, to help uh, get this process going. And with no further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Massimo, Ms. Whitelaw, and uh, other uh, council or other administration reps to uh, give us an uh, overview and, and then they'll be available for uh, questions afterwards. Well, Chair, thank you so very much. I know uh, Ms. Whitelaw and I both, um, as you've mentioned, deeply appreciate the opportunity to share this very important information with you on this um, critical action that's proposed, much needed. Um, with that, I'm going to, in the interest of time, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Whitelaw, and she's going to begin our presentation. Um, and then uh, after we conclude, um, we'll be open to your questions. All right. Thanks, Faye. I appreciate that. I am going to share my screen, and hopefully um, what I'm sharing, folks will see, and you should be seeing my PowerPoint. If you're not, please let me know. <laughs> so I'm assuming we are. So um, as, as Mr. Massimo indicated, uh, we are co-presenting today, and we'll start with the solid waste um, portion of it and then move into the DOT portion of the presentation. And the first thing I'd like to really start with is get going here. I purposely do this. PowerPoints can kind of sometimes mess me up a little bit. So hopefully that everyone can see that. Please let me know if you can't see the entire slide. But um, so seven months ago, I accepted an opportunity to come over to Public Works to um, to really look at how things are running and to, you know, Run, run public works, we should say, but also um, tagged into that request was also to look at process and to look at improvement opportunities and the potential of how we could stand up a DOT. So with that charge seven months ago, I dug in deep to public works and have really enjoyed the opportunities that I have um, had to experience. And one of the things that I really learned early on is that public works is one department, but it really does already in many ways function as two separate entities, solid waste and what I call right-of-way management. Um, they are separately staffed. Um, the folks in, in, most, in solid waste don't very rarely cross over into right-of-way activities. They are separately budgeted, as y'all who have gone through budgeting processes and, and particularly um, um, the longer term council members know uh, there's an operating budget for solid waste activities, as well as an operating budget for a GSD and USD and USD being part of the solid waste activities along with some special funding. And then also equipment and infrastructure is really separated as well. They are um, separately budgeted and separately financed um, through the, the general process 
Um, you do have some um, overlap. Brush is a great option of overlap. It affects both right of way and it affects um, the individual solid waste and um, what we do there. Beautification uh, commission is another one where there is. So there are some areas of overlap, but in, in the majority of things, even if you go out to the website and you go and look at our website and you look down along the, the side panel, you can pretty much put each one of those into one of the two buckets per se. Now they're both supported inside the public works department by finance and HR and safety and communications. And those support mechanisms do um, round out the public works department, but there is a lot of things that are already separated. So I wanted to make a point that although from the outside public works is integrated and there's a lot of um, integration between the two, in many ways, when you get in, and it's something I didn't know until I actually got in here and started really learning how everything works, do you realize that there's a lot of separation that already is occurring? So moving on then to what do we mean when we talk about moving waste to water? Um, where has solid waste been um, for the last 20 years, 30 years? There have been many, many plans around solid waste. There's been a lot of activity around solid waste and all the way back to 1994 and then really in the most recent just few years starting with 2016 and 19 and 2021 you can see that a lot of these plans and these groups and these uh, sustainability advisory groups including the most recent one that just came out they all are saying a lot of the same things they're all really talking about a lot of actions that we could but we haven't done most of these things. And a lot of that has to do with funding, has to do with getting inside and how do you bring it out. In fact, the one big recent, what I would call fundamental thing that we were going to do, which was every other week recycling, increasing our recycling service had to be cut as part of the budget reductions. And, and we were ready to go and even were able to get a grant to um, from the state to get trucks and yet, Funding stopped us. So there's a lot of a lot of wanting to do, but not a lot of action in the last years because of funding, because of lack of, of um, energy in many ways, and, and in some ways getting lost in the public works umbrella, as you would say. So I want to make sure that this is not something new of the things we're talking about wanting to do. One of the things that you see is every every plan has some sort of how do you pay for it. There's the pay grow that we've talked about. There's an enterprise that we've talked about. There's other ways of, of funding that would not be dependent upon USD property taxes. So that's one of the things that I think is important to keep in mind. Um, and when you think of those plans and, and what they said, many of them recommended and most of these um, recommendations from the committees and plans really talk about four biggies that we're currently not doing, which is increased recycling, food waste collection, increased yard waste collection or brush as we call it, and dedicated funding source outside of a general fund. This is just a really short, small snapshot of what our peer cities are doing that we're not doing. Um, uh, there was a, a um, more comprehensive, robust comparison in the email package that you got before the last um, committee meeting. So I, I refer you to that for some of the more details. But this is just to give you an idea that you can see that increased yard collection is, is pretty across the board. Increased recycling is across the board. And many of these cities have some sort of dedicated funding other than the general fund. So um, these are the things that we aspire to as a city. These are the things that are mentioned in the, in the um, recommendations from the committees, from the plans that we want to do, but we're not there yet. So when you think about that, one of the things I think I kind of brought to the table when I came to Public Works was, um, you know, what are some improvements for solid waste? What I didn't realize over the time is that I would realize how much in common solid waste either currently already has with water services um, could have with water services. Examples being, you know, there is an individual customer driven activity to solid waste. And for those of you who were, who were along the ride with me in the USD back in August when we were having problems with Red River, we all know about our individual customers um, worried about their trash not getting picked up and having that in individual customer um, 
response and, and relationship. Um, obviously, there's the idea of digestion. What do we do with our, with composting? What do we do with food waste? Well, most of you, I hope, have toured the biosolids facility. It's not quite the same um, as it is, but it's very much um, the same thoughts and technical um, expertise would be done with both. There's a sustainability focus that solid waste really works on, as in reducing um, wet landfill waste and increasing C and D recycling. Those tie in really nicely with what sustainability activities water is doing with stormwater and the soil conservation district has been with water now for a few mm -hmm. years. They just recently through council approval have the solar program. So there's a lot of sustainability activities that water is doing that solid waste is either doing or aspires to do. And then finally, as the plans have talked about, there is this concept of an enterprise fund and what does that mean? Um, water did a did the enterprise fund back with stormwater division starting way back in 2002 we'll talk about in just a, a second and they currently manage three separate really enterprise funds in water sewer and stormwater they and they've had that experience of how do you manage an enterprise fund and what all goes with an enterprise fund and there's a lot that needs to be done We've been fortunate that, you know, in my lifetime, water and sewer has always been an enterprise fund. So, so sometimes it's hard to imagine how did it actually get started. So these are some of the advantages that I think solid waste could really gain from by, by moving under the water services umbrella. Although, as I just mentioned, it would really be separate um, because all the funds are separate and um, they wouldn't mingle as such, which I think has been a concern. So let's talk about that because that has a lot of questions were asked around what does an enterprise fund look like? When would it happen? How does that start? Who approves it? So a little history lesson. I went back in the archives um, at Stormwater and asked. And in 2002 is when Stormwater moved to water. Um, as, as provided in the information, that did not require council approval because the, um, the rule was not in place at that time regarding the transfer of assets. And so it was done as um, just an MOU between departments. And then you see throughout the years that it took seven years before there actually was a stormwater utility and user fee established in an enterprise. And during that time, there were audits, there were studies, there was cost of service studies, there was a business plan, which is what the cost of service was put into. That was discussed, these were provided to council. And over 50 community meetings were had throughout that time frame out there explaining to stakeholders. And that's after the business plan to get their engagement. There were many meetings that were going on during it as well. So I want everyone to kind of understand that seven years, it could be five years, it could be three years, but it's not something that we anticipate would be done in a very short period of time. And that would not include a lot of stakeholder engagement and a lot of community engagement. There's things that really are complicated, things that, that have to be thought about. Like right now, USD is what um, property taxes is one of the things you get by being in the USD and the GSD doesn't. Well, how would that change? That's a question that has to be asked and studied and thought about a lot. It's not something that you can think of. And the council would have to act on those changes. So there is going to be a long investigation and time frame if, in fact, this is something that um, the administration and council would like to pursue. And so, and finally, the, the last thing in this meeting before I turn it over to Faye is let's talk about what does it really mean right now. So if the MOU was passed and this became effective for July 1st, what would happen now is our customer service would go uninterrupted. Those who have service, and whether they're a recycling customer or curbside customer or backdoor customer, their service would be uninterrupted. They would still get their trash picked up, knock on wood when it's supposed to. And if we have hiccups, it wouldn't, they would be hiccups regardless of whether they were under a public works umbrella or whether they were under a water umbrella, that's for sure. The convenience centers would still have the same hours um, as well. No fee changes. Right now, we are only moving the operations. We're not talking about funding. We're not talking about um, increasing services. So once again, the same services for the customer. There would be no um, water bill would not show 
any sort of fee. We cannot, by law, mix water and solid waste, either as or financially. Um, so that would not change. What could, though, happen is begin looking at opportunities for improvement, begin to give some support to the solid waste activities that we talked about in the recommendations from the sustainability committees and from the zero waste management plan that water has experience on and could support composting or aerob anaerobic digestion, or could you do an enterprise fund, or could you do some expansion of services in different ways? And finally, I just want to remind once again is that nothing could happen without council approval. Those are the things both in many ways, it's not just council approval of establishment of fees, but even if we wanted to expand day-to-day um, -day operations, including going to every other week recycling, that would be part of solid waste operating budget, which will then come through council for approval. So um, with that, I'm going to give Faye an opportunity now to talk about what's going on with the DOT and what, how this could help establishing a DOT. Thank you very much, Shannon. Thank you again, council members, for your time this afternoon. Shannon, next slide. So why does Nashville need a DOT? Um, there are four primary reasons that we would offer um, for discussion. One is merging the transportation activities into one unified department. I know one of the things that Shannon and I worked together on during her tenure there is not only assessing um, what we do there, but also assessing what we really haven't done there and the opportunities that we have to leverage our existing capabilities um, in a more accountable and more performance focused way. And we'll talk about that in just a minute, but also some of the, the places when we begin to talk about taking what's left within public works that are that is in that sort of transportation house, but literally focusing it into a department of transportation into one unified department. Um, those are the kinds of things that we've been able to ascertain over the course of this assessment. Um, it's a platform for staff development and innovation, and we intend for it to be. I know many of the council members are aware that we've spent a lot of time uh, recognizing that our this is a business, and that our business processes, um, whether that's in the procurement or other places, needed to really be enhanced as a part of being a performance-driven organization. So um, we have looked at um, the work that we have, we didn't have pre-construction or construction management manuals as an example. And one of those things for staff development and innovation is in having those very well described um, processes of how we do our work um, so that it's uniform and there's a, a standard of expectation um, around what we're doing. So, and that's important to develop our staff so that they're always growing and developing and that we're also able to innovate. Uh, performance driven structure that aligns with key critical functions and we're going to look at the org chart here in just a moment and we'll talk about those key critical functions and then increased accountability we know that that's important whether it's in the public's business or in private business accountability is everything and having an organization that is performance driven unified and has that capability for staff development innovation will will ensure that we increase that accountability next slide so the organizational chart, what would a DOT look like? Um, you can see from the slide that's up now, we, we looked at the DOT from the perspective of what are the primary um, functions. Infrastructure development and delivery is a core piece, and that includes the planning, the designing, and delivery um, of infrastructure development delivery. And then what we this plan design and deliver has to be operated and maintained managed and so then we have infrastructure operations and asset management which is supported through operations maintenance and regulation and enforcement uh, lines uh, and you can see those there and then of course standard administrative functions in finance and grants and hr communications and so forth that would support the um, functions of that department next slide so we want to be sure that we're very clear that the the DOT organizational structure that we're proposing goes well beyond rebranding, although certainly rebranding ourselves as a Department of Transportation is but one small element of that. 
the notion that how we operate and do our business now and the kinds of results that we see and, um, and that the kind of performance that we want to see um, goes well beyond, as I said, rebranding with a focus on key functions, which is lined up with what you just saw in the organizational chart around plan, design, delivery, um, and operating, maintaining enforcement, that restructuring, it's a substantial restructuring um, that is there that will enable people to take the opportunity to, uh, for their talents to be restructured and redeveloped um, and aligned with our, our performance aims now. It'll drive a culture shift, again, that goes well beyond rebranding. Um, so that focus on key functions, the, the part of it that is a small part of rebranding what we're calling ourselves that signifies that we have indeed fundamentally changed the restructuring and then driving the culture shift are all important parts. Next slide. Um, we want to emphasize that why now? We've been asked that question. Um, it emphasizes the commitment by council and the administration to solve transportation needs. It's a key part, as we've talked about, the transportation plan was a part of, of being able to demonstrate that we had a plan that supported our vision of what do we want to accomplish that enabled us to be um, more competitive and enabled our, our potential partners to understand um, how they could work with us. In addition to that, having a DOT is important in this regard, too, because this shows that not only do we know what we want to do, but we know how we're going to get it done. Um, it concentrates the efforts to implement projects that are in that transportation plan and capital spending plan that council has committed to. And it demonstrates the approach to stakeholders and community members before considering a charter amendment. We've talked about the fact that this could be accomplished now under this MOU that suggested and before council for consideration. And this would give the, the community the opportunity to see how a DOT actually works before it comes to them as a, as a charter amendment. One other thing I would mention before we move into your questions and answers um, with regard to the presentation today is that we appreciated the fact to have the questions that you submitted to us prior to today um, have the opportunity to answer those in good detail for you. And I know that that document was provided back to council earlier this morning um, in response to your questions. So with that, I will turn it back over to um, Chairman Nash to um, lead us forward. Thank you, Mr. Massimo and, uh, and Ms. Uh, Whitelaw. We appreciate uh, that presentation. I see that uh, Chairman O'Connell has joined us, and I want to give him an opportunity to uh, make any initial comments he'd like to make, and then we'll uh, get to uh, the uh, rest of the people for questions. Thanks, Mr. Chair. The um, Really, the only thing I'll say is I think I, like a lot of our colleagues, um, have been eager to see the idea of a Department of Transportation advance in Nashville. Uh, and I think now we're at the point of asking the difficult questions about the best path forward. So um, that's all I uh, have at the outset. And I've, I've got a few questions. So whenever you're ready. Thank you. Uh, uh, I see uh, we have uh, Council Member Mendez and, and then Bradford and then O'Connell. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, and and I, I dialed in um, a couple minutes late, so my apologies if I'm hitting something that's been asked. Um, but um, there, there have been a couple things that have just been um, honestly really confusing to me. And one is that um, it, it feels like the entire presentation is um, built around the premise that um, this MOU that we've got legislation on creates a Department of Transportation, but every time I read the MOU, it doesn't say anything about creating a Department of Transportation. And, and so I just want to clarify, am I missing something or are we in fact not creating a Department of Transportation with this legislation? I don't know who that's for, somebody. Uh, this is this is Shanna. I can try. Um, you are correct in that it does not create an official Department of Transportation. 
by charter, it would still be legally public works. In the same way that Metro Water Services currently, it legally, and you see it all the time on it, is the Department of Water and Sewerage Services. And in the same way, I believe that IT is still the information services. So legally, it would still be considered public works until there was a charter amendment that would truly create the DOT. What this MOU would do was really focus all of public works efforts in a transportation um, focus, because that would be what would be remaining inside the legal public works. Does that so, help to explain? Yeah, not really, because the written memo we got a couple of weeks ago said the exact opposite. It said that a department of trans that this is a precursor to creating a department of transportation. And, I mean, it really, I mean, you just said we are creating a Department of Transportation, but we're not calling it that. And the memo we got a couple of weeks ago said we're not creating a Department of Transportation. This is a preliminary early step. We'll do that at some point in the future. And I mean, I, I guess, um, I mean, so I'm, I'm hearing you say that we will have a de facto Department of Transportation as soon as we pass the legislation for the, to approve the MOU. I would envision that there would be a transition period as stated in the memo about rebranding um, the existing in public works as being functionally focused on uh, transportation activities and called the Department of Transportation in much the same way MTA became WEGO. Many of their activities stayed the same, but they changed their name um, in that sense. I, I, I understand, and, and, and please understand, I, I'm doing a little bit of shooting the messenger here, but um, Massimo just said the opposite of that. She just said it's not a rebranding, it's a functional restructuring. And, and this idea of when it is that we have a, uh, essentially a Department of Transportation, whether it's 10 minutes after we pass the resolution um, for the MOU, 10 weeks after that, 10 months after that, I, I'm just being upfront about, I don't get when it is that we have something that acts as a Department of Transportation in this game plan. And um, and I, I'll be, I'll, I'll stop now because I know we're short on time, um, but I, I'm just saying I'm, I'm sort of confused about that. And it just continues to feel a little uh, ready fire aim to me. And with that, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Mendez. Councilmember Bradford, go ahead, please. You recognize? Thank you, Chair. My question: When I was reading the uh, answers that we got back, and the topic of where brush pickup and beautification were going, I said beautification was going to Metro Water. That kind of makes sense. But then it said brush pickup would stay under Public Works. Can you kind of explain the methodology or the thinking behind that? Because in my mind, I'm thinking beautification and brush pickup would both go to the same area. Um, uh, could you explain why you decided that brush would stay with, quote, transportation? Yes, sir. Yes, Councilman, I can. It's all about um, equipment. It's all about the, we just recently went through a winter weather event. The folks who do brush are the folks who drive the snow plows. The folks who do brush are the folks currently who do um, right of way activities. Uh, they do brush, but in the winter they do other right of way activities. They're the folks who, um, and the trucks and the vehicles to do that. So a long term and, um, goal would be to move brush activities to solid waste. But for right now, the, the equipment and the people that support those emergency response needs, such as um, snow plowing, such as debris cleanup after a storm, after a tornado, or after a flood with support with public works, I mean, with stormwater, those folks are the brush folks. So operationally, it makes sense because of a lack of equipment and staffing right now to leave them for the short term in the, in the public works DOT. 
Okay, that makes sense now that it's been explained that way. Just like I said, when I read it first, I was kind of curious, like, okay, where are they going with this? But your answer makes absolute sense. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Radford. Uh, I see uh, Chairman O'Connell has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I guess I'm gonna follow up on uh, part of Council Member Mendoza's line of questioning. Is there, I'm, you know, I guess I'm maybe even more confused after Ms. Whitelaw's presentation uh, because of the apparent uh, division of functions that seems fairly natural within public works already. Is there something that would prevent the proposed org chart from being realized in the right of way functions of public works as it exists today? But Kamala, go, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Mr. Massimo, you can go first. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I don't know that there's anything that would necessarily preclude that, but I think that that's that sort of restructuring of within the quote right of way function does represent the formation of a, of a Department of Transportation because it's such a substantial restructuring from its current, um, its current, uh, uh, its current organizational structure. Shanna? Um, I would agree um, with Mr. Massimo. Right now, the or internal uh, public work structure right? Around, around right away is very centered in one area specifically. And so it could be done, but it also would um, really take a lot of effort in, in shifting the thought and the culture inside only one portion of public works or try, and as opposed to having one entity. As someone who is currently um, over both, that's a heavy lift for one director to try and continue to manage solid waste and all that goes with that, while also trying to do a full cultural, re not cultural shift and organizational shift inside the public works department. But there's nothing that precludes it specifically. Well, then let me ask that question the other way around, I guess. Um, again, following on Council Member Mendez there, I, how, how would we have assurances based on um, approving this MOU that the org chart would come into existence given that, you know, we have, um, it, it would still be the, the public works department, it would just not be performing the solid waste functions. I think the intention council member, and I, I hope I'm answering your question correctly and understanding what you're saying. Um, the, the purpose of developing the org chart and beginning to realign the activities and thinking through what a Department of Transportation needs to accomplish, especially in a city the size uh, and complexity of, of Nashville, that org chart is an essential part of how we need to reshape and as as Ms. Whitelaw just discussed, reculture, um, you know, both those who are there and and where we need to move moving forward. So um, I don't know what would I mean, the assurance is that that is, I suppose, how we presented it to you and that establishing our intention to accomplish that with a clear understanding as, um, you know, with experienced managers and having, you know, done these, run these kinds of organizations, that that is what is needed in order for us to become more accountable and achieve greater success and so forth. So I, I, I hope that answers your question. I think it partially does. And it's a, it's a good segue into the next one, which is um, why, why, why go through the process of establishing the enterprise fund under a different umbrella. I, I do understand the, hey, we've managed enterprise funds before argument, but I mean, honestly, in some ways, I'm I'm looking at the overall goals um, and it, you know, it's sort of like we have water, sewer, storm water over here, we have solid waste here, and then we have a variety of functions that would ultimately drive a DOT over here. So why not leave public works functionally as a department that is effectively an enterprise fund that focuses on those works. It is an option. I think the struggle is 
how does public works get some of that experience and some of that support and some of that help that um, being under the water services umbrella relative to establishment of, of the enterprise fund can be? As long as it's under a public works function, it is. And uh, just to make sure I understand your question, are you saying after the DOT is pulled off that public works would stay as just public works? I think a public works would stay as mainly solid waste, I believe is what we're saying. Yeah, I mean, kind of like why not create a DOT? And then um, if we also want to have uh, solid waste functions exist, leave that intact and, and effectively convert that portion of the, the what is now the Department of Public Works into that enterprise fund that performs those functions. Um, I think that that would be very, very challenging, doable, but challenging in the sense of, of staffing as far as support uh, and and um, the the expertise needed to support getting to an, an enterprise fund. If that makes sense, as the 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 financial support of knowledge of how they work, the um, some of the cost of set service studies that will be necessary, the outreach. <laughs> if we create a DOT and you assume most of those support staff go with that DOT, now you have a public works that does not have support staff. So now we are having to staff up either in a DOT or in a solid waste enterprise fund, the support functions of finance, customer service, communications, HR, all of those things that you would you would lose some of that efficiency associated with moving to water. So then I guess my follow-up question would be in this, I, I appreciate the sort of peer comparison uh, grid there in terms of service level and funding categories. Uh, how, so one thing that wasn't clear to me there is how many cities have their public water utility operate their solid waste services as an enterprise fund? I know of none that I have looked up where the water is. I have seen uh, utilities where sewer, stormwater, and solid waste are um, tied together. And that's typically where water is privately owned or quasi-private situation. But to say is water, sewer, and solid waste, I have not found one that has it. I have I have found multiples where other than water are combined, and um, even some other things like stormwater and solid waste. That's that's a very good marriage, I would say. I see. So I mean, I, I guess my comment on that would be that I I tend to find the reasons to be doing something different than everyone else to be because you have a competitive advantage so great that no one else can do it, or that. Uh, you are running an experiment with a high probability of success. So um, I would maybe dig into that a little bit and see if, uh, you know, how, I guess there again, if I'm looking at ratepayer protection on the utility side, um, service level delivery on the solid waste side, I would, I would want to make sure we can go out to constituents and uh, say with full confidence, yes, this model is unique and we are, we know it will succeed because of X, Y, and Z. And I'm, you know, I'm, I think again to Council Member Mendez's point, I'm not necessarily seeing that in the memo. Um, my last question is, you know, as we started this term uh, and kind of had to go through both training and then rapidly uh, dive into a corrective action plan specifically related to our utility, our local utility board training from the Tennessee Comptroller's Office covered topics related to utility operations, but there was not much material there on uh, what to do with an array of services unrelated to water, sewer, or stormwater. Um, do we have any sense of what state expectations would be of council oversight in this regard? I'm going to have to defer that to, to Mr. Jameson. I do not know myself, so Mr. Jameson, I think, can answer that. Thank you, Councilman O'Connell. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Um, it, it lurking in the back of my mind with that question is, uh, of course, the uh, somewhat onerous obligation on council members to act as overseers for uh, water. And the, I think it's the 12 hours of uh, continuing education that council members are expected to have. 
Um, I believe uh, uh, Teresa Castonis is on the line here, so she will correct me if I get this in incorrect, but the assumption of solid waste responsibilities in no way broadens the council members' oversight obligations. That is, that is limited to the, to the water realm, uh, if you will, uh, rate structures and so forth. And so because this won't alter that rate structure, and because it doesn't broaden the, for that reason, we understand that it does not in fact broaden the council's obligations beyond what they've uh, uh, already inherited by virtue of not having a separate board. So I guess before Ms. Costanos responds, let me just throw a, a clarifying, um, uh, I guess, sub question in there. So, you know, if I am trying to be a board member for the water utility and suddenly I'm told, hey, don't worry about this, there's there's some new accounting stuff out here, but it will never come up, you know, like we're going to build an accounting wall here. If I'm an auditor, I'm probably looking at this a little bit differently from the standpoint of what the oversight expectations are. So I'm just, I want to make sure again that I understand it from a, a liability and risk perspective. So I'll, I'll let Ms. Costanas jump in here. I would concur with what um, Mr. Jamison said. So I've looked at the um, state statutory authority um, uh, that provides for um, the governing body, or in this case, the Metro Council, to kind of serve as the board um, for the water and sewerage works when there is not an alternative board in place. Um, and it is it is limited to those water and sewerage services. So the, that oversight function um, doesn't go beyond the water and sewerage functions of the department. So if additional, for example, stormwater is not included. So um, we already have a division within that department that, that does not fall within um, that oversight responsibility that, the, that where the council serves in a board-like role. I guess maybe then it's a matter of interpretation because my understanding from the training is that we are responsible for the financial oversight of water sewer. And so stormwater is a slight additional complexity um, that has its own financial components to it. And I think solid waste would be yet another, um, but I'll, I'll hold further questions on that for now. Thanks. Okay, I have uh, Council Lady Henderson and then Council Lady Hurt uh, coming up. Uh, thank you, Chair Nash. I, I concur with uh, Councilman O'Connell and, and Councilman Mendez. My, my, my questions are, um, are, are similar. And I think, um, you know, I, I, I think uh, Council has for a while in the community uh, has understood the, the potential of an evolution to a DOT and kind of in theory and conceptually. I think it's something that we're all supportive of. We, we know we need to do a better job on infrastructure delivery. We understand that, you know, things that happen within the right of way, um, you know, from an acquisition standpoint, from a, a management standpoint, permitting, uh, utilities, you know, bikeways, all those things um, converge. And so, um, again, I'm just having a little trouble making the leap from, um, you know, theory and concept with which I agree. Um, and Ms. Whitelaw, I thought your, your presentation was um, helpful um, in making the rationale um, for, you know, why there might be a logic to have trash um, and solid waste uh, under that other umbrella, again, um, in theory and conceptually. Um, and so, you know, to Councilman O'Connell's point, um, you know, just the, the kind of the, the, the practicality of you know, the, the funds and the separation of those funds. And I feel like there's been a lot of work that's gone on in the background, um, you know, with appreciation of Ms. DeMassimo around the, um, you know, the, the, the manuals and, you know, some of those, uh, those technical aspects um, in our progression to improve public works as we move towards a DOT. Um, but I think um, I, I, I remain concerned that, in this time, I, I just feel that, you know, Public Works has been um, kind of betwixt and between for so many years. I think throughout Councilman O'Connell and Mendez and I, our, our five years of service um, on council, there's kind of been, you know, the transportation plan and what was going to happen. And, you know, our cities had a lot of challenges and 
you know, three mayors in five years and fits and starts. And um, I, I just feel like I, by way of kind of proof of concept, I am somewhat disconcerted that I have not seen improvements internal to public works that I think could and should have happened that would give sort of faith in and proof of concept of, you know, what we're talking about, kind of the culture shift, you know, you know, we've had a lack of accountability, a lack of leadership, a lack of coordination, a lot of great folks in public works, but that department has really just struggled. And so I just feel like we're still kind of in this betwixt and between place where in principle and theory, we see what you're saying, but from a practical standpoint, I have not seen kind of the steps in the implementation, things that would logically be on a path to DOT, um, you know, just kind of program management, infrastructure delivery. And so I just feel like there's still kind of a, a disconnect there. And, you know, cart before horse, you know, ready, aim, fire, as Councilman Mendez said, I just, um, I, respectfully, I just don't see internal to public works today. It just feels like we're shifting folks around and we're not doing any improvements there. And that gives me kind of lack of faith in the, the DOT process that would come. Um, so can you speak to just sort of practically what is being done in public works today that puts us on this path um, and just kind of, you know, boost our confidence around the practical side of the implementation, the details. Right. Thank you. Councilmember Nash, is it all right if I respond to that? Please, anybody. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you for those questions, Council Member. Very, very thoughtful and helpful, I think, in the discussion. And I would tell you how I think things have really changed and in some ways that perhaps are not as um, overt at this point. But keep in mind that we've, we're coming off of a year where we were in a, a, a budget freeze. Um, and so project development and project activity perhaps was not moving forward in a way that you might see some of the structural changes that we've already been working on and started to make. But I know you're aware of some of them, so good good to put those out here. One is we now have a really well-developed utility coordination process um, that is occurring at both the staff level and at the management level um, and has had real results in terms of the kinds of an, an example, a real life example of this is in the work that we just recently did with NES and TDOT around the lighting in some of the corridors where we've seen high incidence of pedestrian fatalities. And I think that basis that we established with the utility coordination, the revamped utility coordination process, that's an actual output from that. Um, in addition to that, I know that you're very aware and we've had previous presentations around the contract improvements in the a &E contract process. Um, I can assure you that the industry sees that quite differently now and understands very clearly our, you know, sharpest pencil, sharpest minds, best cost, best solutions uh, mindset and understands that our expectations around performance um, for them is as high as it is um, of our own. And then in addition to that, I would say that those, um, while that it sounds pretty dry, I suspect, when we talk about you know, um, construction, pre-construction and construction management manuals, those are essential tools that every Department of Transportation has that is successfully delivering great infrastructure on budget, on time, and so forth. I think the one place that you probably have not seen as much improvement yet, but we have made some significant progress, is in the delivery of the sidewalk program. And I know that that's a very popular program. It, it did take us um, quite a bit of time and some independent review, and we even got some peer review in working with us from, from TDOT to look at our sidewalk program and understand where some of those opportunities are to change that so that we can deliver more, we can deliver quickly, and we can deliver better, because I know that is one of the things I've heard from many council members is that, gee, I was promised a sidewalk five years ago, seven years ago, and I don't have it yet not going to be the case moving forward, but we do need a structure, an organization, and the organizational structure that we've brought forward 
to enable us to, to do those things. But nonetheless, I would suggest that there's actually been a lot of improvement. It may have been sort of quiet improvement up until this point, but there's given the year that we've had, there's probably a lot of good reasons for that as well. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And just by way of follow up, Councilman Nash with a very specific question. So I guess, you know, public works has been underfunded for well over a decade. And part of why we struggle to deliver is we don't have appropriate staff. And we're going to need that staff, whether it's public works or whether it's DOT. So I think I'm trying to understand. I know we've been in a budget freeze moment, but to inform this next budget season, you know, as we had hoped year prior and year prior, um, you know, staffing up public works with its current, you know, uh, structure or potentially restructured, you know, again, why do we necessarily have to have, uh, you know, I, I know we're in that evolution, but why does, you know, in the kind of part course space of, you know, can we not just continue to focus on making public works better on the path to the DOT evolution, you know, trash does what trash does, build more confidence, get staffing, and, you know, then you trash potentially, or it stands alone based on, you know, I guess, so for this budget season, a lot of your, you know, your strategic plan, your outline, your timeline that you shared on January 14th is sort of predicated on, we got to do this before the budget so that we can appropriately staff. But why can't we just appropriately staff public works? Um, I guess was my last question in, in, uh, in view of this next budget season. Well, I'll let Ms. Whitebog uh, chime in on this as well, but I will say this. I do think that knowing what we're trying to appropriately staff to, I mean, we're not just trying to improve public works. We're trying to establish an organization of transportation that is focused on delivery and accountability um, and has all the, you know, the, the organizational structure that aims it to do that. So I think that that is an important first step. And I think we recognize the resourcing needs that are there too, to your point. Um, and I think by if you have the framework in place to know what you're resourcing to, that's very important. And that's not cart before horse. That's really making sure that do we know what we're aiming at and what we're trying to do and how we need to do it. And then we allocate resourcing to it to ensure that we're accomplishing that performance aim. But Ms. Whitelaw, would you have anything further to add to that? I do have one thing that I think is really important to, to acknowledge. I'm the interim director, and I know nothing of anything about transportation. I've met with most of y'all, and I think y'all all have learned that. So in order to recruit the permanent director of this organization, are you recruiting someone who is a public works person who is handling both, and then you give up something relative to a transportation visionary? Or are you recruiting a director of transportation that can take this org chart and can take this um, for it as transportation and the needs and sees the advantage and the excitement of a department of transportation? So that's, to me, a really important element to think about when you're trying to recruit. And as far as staffing, you're absolutely right. I can, I, I can assure you that in my budget um, requests, I have requested significant staffing related to the org chart that, that Faye and I put together. So it is about that org chart and saying, what boxes need to be funded? What, where are we lacking? Where are we aligning to? And these are things that could be done inside of public works, but you then do lose the potential of who, who will run it and what will be their focus? Will their focus be, I'm a solid waste kind of person or is their focus, I'm a transportation kind of focus? Because as the one who has been doing it, it's been a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I've been somebody who has been a part of metro government for 15 years. So I at least had a heads up because I know how the, the government works here. So I do want to, to, to emphasize that that is an important part of, of this program as well. So yeah. thank you both for your answers. And we're getting pushed on time. I'll make sure uh, Council Lady Hurd gets a chance to ask her question. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, and, and I don't really have any questions, but but my concerns and confusion is like my previous colleagues and, and Council Lady 
Henderson really hit on it when she spoke about the staffing because two of the three reasons why we need a DOT was about emphasizing commitment and concentrated efforts. Um, that to me sounds like staffing development. It sounds like something different. I, I don't understand why they we have to have a, a total DOT. It seems like there could be an office of transportation. I think the infrastructure, regulations, highways, and all of those things are separate. Uh, so I'm, I'm very much uh, trying to understand it like uh, my colleagues just so eloquently laid out in their line of questioning and comments. So that's the concern that I have um, because I didn't hear a lot about different modes of transportation. I didn't hear anything about the the maintenance and upkeep of our vehicles, the equipment that is used for transportation and all of those. And it seems that that is part of what a Department of a Transportation would do. So, and, and I'm also concerned about how fast this is going and what it would take for us to do it. So perhaps some kind of pilot program would be, would work better like having an office of transportation as opposed to doing a massive department of transportation. I mean, we, we, we just now looking at a possible transportation plan, which, you know, it's just a little, just a little bit too much for me, too quick. So I just wanted to share those comments, uh, Mr. Chair. I thank you for it. Thank you. Uh, Council Lady Hauser, for four more minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, I um, have a lot of confusion right now, and it may be that you've sent something out that I just haven't seen. I've heard reference to uh, an organization chart and a reference to what duties would fall under the Department of Transportation, what duties would fall under Public Works, what duties would fall under uh, water and waste management, but I have not seen that. Has there been a real specific listing in a very clear and easy to read spreadsheet and I've just missed it or has that not been created yet? Uh, Ms. White, I think you probably can answer that one. Um, council member, the materials that have been provided were um, about a, a week ago before the last council member or the last council meeting and committee meetings. We sent out a, a memo that outlined that um, Mr. Mosmo and I have sent to, to um, Mayor Cooper of solid waste and, and the DOT separating. And there has not been a spreadsheet that says sidewalks stay with the Department of Transportation and um, bike waste and roadway stays with the Department of Transportation and recycling goes with solid waste. That spreadsheet has not been created. It has really been under the, the auspices, I guess you would say, of solid waste includes these and right of way activities include these. So there is not a spreadsheet detailing every specific activity that solid waste handles or that, um, side, or that right of way and transportation handles. I think uh, council member further to that, the org chart that does suggest um, in the review of the org chart, when you get a chance to see it, you'll see though that it does suggest, I think it's pretty clear to figure out where, you know, where things fall based upon the org charts that were presented in that material that Director White Law just mentioned that was distributed before the last uh, council meeting. Uh, could you, I'm, I'm gonna have to go back and find that. Uh, do you know when that was sent out or who sent it out so I can find it in my emails or can that be resent? I'll be more than happy to send it to you. I, I, I will resend it to you, Council Member, no problem. I'll do that right off the Thank you, because it was probably 672 emails ago. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm going to chime in just a minute uh, here on the end. Uh, I, I, I guess I'm a little, I, I'm a simpler man, I guess, than, than some of you. I, 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 I don't to uh, uh, maybe uh, 
Siege, uh, the uh, complexity that, that many of you uh, want to put this. I, I really think the MOU and the chance to kind of slowly um, transition, evolve, if you would, does provide a great opportunity for us as we head towards the DOT. And we, it's kind of like getting married. You think you know what's going to happen, but until you really get married and start living together, you're not sure what's going to happen. Uh, and I think that's kind of where we might be in this process now. And I think the MOU gives us a good chance to work through some of those things. The kind of an engagement, if you might say, before we, we actually do the, uh, the full-fledged DOT uh, through a, uh, some sort of charter change. And uh, I'd say you did, I don't know if we've, we're bumping up right now against the uh, five o'clock uh, 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 meeting that uh, we have to uh, relinquish our time to. Thank you everybody for, I hope most of you got your questions answered. Uh, if you have more questions, I'm sure that uh, Mr. Massimo and, and Director Whitelaw would be happy to uh, uh, follow up with you if, if you want to contact me. Um, so I'm going to sign off. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all again so much for your time today. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.